chair recognizes Representative Colhurst to explain the measure. Um, the members. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, thanks for having me here today. I uh, felt in uh, 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 Speaker Bond's uh, layout that I was in the Public Health Committee for a moment. Uh, we were talking about obesity and all the things. Okay. And, uh, wanted to, um, I wrote uh, Representative Dutton a little, Chairman Dutton a little note about uh, food deserts and things that we're working on. So I look forward to working with the committee on that particular issue. And I also told uh, Chairman Bonham that I probably never sat through a uh, a, a But anyway, that was, that was, that was pretty amazing. Uh, I Quite a record. I've never quite seen that in my seven terms here. But it's early in my seven terms, so there you go. I, 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 I think that there might be some witnesses today, and, 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 and Chairman Aycock had asked me, he goes, how many witnesses are you going to have? And I said, I don't know. I'm not asking anyone to come and, and testify on this bill, because this is a bill that I've been talking about since 2005, and actually uh, passed a bill very similar to this on the House floor is a House Amendment uh, unanimously back, um, I think, in one of the special sessions or uh, way back when. But I want to talk to you about uh, House Bill 101. Uh, this adds a section to Chapter 25 of the Education Code to ensure that a school district may only use radio frequency tracking on its students with approval of its uh, publicly elected school board members and the students' voluntary participation after approval from parents. Um, this bill is about parental rights, privacy, and the role of government while not usurping local control. And so um, you're going to hear testimony, I think, from people that, that sell RFID chips, and I want to clarify a few things. So, this isn't my first rodeo on this particular bill. You may ask, why do you carry this bill? And I think it's, it's a unique bill where the ACLU um, supports the bill and the Evil Forum supports the bill. And, and, and this is just something as a mother. Uh, when I became aware of what was going on, first it was in California, and then um, I progressed to uh, actually, you know, I was kind of sitting there going, that will never happen in Texas. And the next thing you know, Texas was doing it in the um, uh, Houston area school district first uh, way back when. And uh, certainly it's now spun out into other school districts and many schools within certain school districts. But um, there are two t types of RFID tracking uh, chips. And I want to make clear that today the bill delineates the what we call active chip versus the passive chip. And what's the passive chip? Um, in my purse I have a little tag that allows me to get in the garage. It allows me to go to the Reagan building over there. It allows me to get into certain parts of this building. And that's an RFID chip that is passive. Uh, it has to meet uh, the reader. Um, the active that we're talking about is the one where there's different readers and it does emit uh, a signal as, as you walk and it'll be picked up by readers so that you can monitor movement. Um, Chairman Aycock and I talked uh, last week and he said, well, I got a chip in my dog and I got a chip uh, with my cattle. And I, write, I said, and Chairman Aycock, now you can have a chip with your grandchild. Um, and so as we talk about this, I do want to talk about what uses there are out there and certainly look at uh, human uses, and is, is that a proper use on humans? As we move into a world of new technology, um, y'all know that you can track your own cell phone. You can track your iPad so you don't lose it. Other people can track you. It's going to be really interesting as we move along. And uh, in the seven years that I've worked on this, um, there's been different for those that testify against the bill today. Hopefully I won't set the bond in record, but maybe I will. You never know. Um, but, you know, we have RFID systems today that track retail goods. Um, we tag livestock with them. Uh, we, uh, uh, we, we use uh, different forms of, of systems to find lost pets, uh, do different things. And today is a, a question of uh, whether or not we want to use that on children, especially the active. And this bill, again, if you would read online, um, 11 of page 1, it, it talks about data without physical contact between card, badge, or tag, and another uh, another device. One of the things that um, the vendors came, uh, they've been steadily coming into the uh, office and, um, you know, they were talking about um, the passive use versus the active. And maybe we haven't delineated well enough in this that, that it's the active. Um, and, and, and as I walk you through this and I'll kind of talk about doesn't prevent a school district from doing it um, as long as the school board of trustees um, approves it. You're going to hear today, well, they approve it because of through the procurement process. That's really 
um, kind of embedded in uh, many of you have been school board members. This just asks for an active, robust um, debate and allows parents to opt out if, if they so choose to do. So, um, you know, you're going to hear more things about RFID to uh, a, a lobbyist that was representing the deer breeders, House Bill 840 by Ryan Gann is going to talk about how we track deer and put RFID in deer or do we not. So um, some of the research that we've looked at uh, throughout the state of Texas, you know, you'll, you'll hear um, school districts say, well, we're doing this for safety, we're doing this to improve our ADA. Um, so it allows us to uh, be able to more accurately get a count that would turn into the state of Texas. Um, currently, there is no opt-out tool for the parents who do not want to uh, track their children. There's an active case going on with that right now. Some would say, you know, that this technology, some would argue, you know, are we dehumanizing our, our children um, and treating them more like um, the um, the uh, tracking that we do on our goods uh, as they move up and down the highways or, or our livestock. Um, some would say that um, the uh, RFI tag is a, a real-time location of a student and, and that uh, their school districts need that. Um, it helps them with their labor. I would disagree. And I've actually uh, been able to research a case in Philadelphia. It's pretty well known where uh, school workers admitted to taking over 56,000 unauthorized webcam pictures of their kids and settled with parents out of court for over $600,000. And so as we move forward in all of these technology um, applications, I just say that we have to be very careful about privacy. It's no secret I passed a bill last session, the HB 300, that was about uh, your medical records and, and privacy. So this is something I'm, I'm interested in, and I think um, you as, as members of the legislature probably are too. So. Um, going through, uh, uh, you know, other states and what they're doing, um, you know, according to the Wall Street Journal and Wired Magazine, California and Texas are still uh, the quote-unquote battleground states for this technology and that tagging children with RFI ch uh, chips is, is uncommon but not new. Um, looking at, um, you'll hear debates about the constitutional implications of uh, RFID and tracking of human uh, human beings, um, you're going to hear um, lots of different argue, arguments about safety. Uh, I know I'm a mother of a 10 year old and a 14 year old, and one of the times I laid out this bill, um, one of the uh, lobbyists that was for the vendor said, "Well, wouldn't you just if you well she liked to go fly fishing in the mountains, and there had been a story at that time about a young boy that had been lost. He was with the Boy Scouts and he was lost uh, in nature. And uh, Chairman Aycock and I, um, uh, we go to uh, mountains with our families and um, we, we uh, enjoy the Platuro area. And we do go, you know, hiking with our children up there. And, and Jimmy Don knows that. He owns land up there as well. And, and um, I, I told that lobbyist, I said, yes. I said, you know, maybe... maybe my decision as a parent, uh, not someone else's decision to track them. And so as we move forward, we're seeing um, this application used where um, they actually are considering putting it, putting it in kids' backpacks, um, putting it in their clothes. Um, I just beg all of us to think about the implication as, as we move down the road. Um, this is not aimed at Northside. This is not aimed at Spring ISD. This is not uh, Austin ISD. Actually, is using GPS. Um, it's a little bit different. They have uh, parental consent. It's an it's an ability to turn it on and off. Um, this was just really looking at the, the the live movement of our children in in school districts. And again, that that is what the uh, what the bill talks about. So. Um, uh, my hope is that schools um, are encouraged to find less intrusive ways of, of, of taking attendance. Um, you know, you can look at the cost, and, and many times they're working with vendors to say, we'll just split how much of a, the delta that we get, the bump that we get off of ABA. I'm not here about the cost. I, I don't care what school districts do on how they pay for technology and how they don't pay for technology. I just want to make sure that parents have a way to opt out without a penalty to a child and to make sure that school boards know uh, exactly what they're getting into before they get into it. And so um, I would say that um, this bill has had bipartisan uh, 
wide range of people who have signed on to it. And um, I, I just look forward to working with all of you. Uh, somebody asked me not long ago, um, you know, what, what, what has been your passion on this? And it's really about being a mom. And my decision of what I do with my kids and what I don't do with my kids. And just having that option of saying, mm, you know, I, I, I'm very careful about my kids' safety because of my public life. And uh, Lois Kate's not allowed to be on uh, Twitter. She's not allowed to be on Facebook or, or uh, Instagram. And she often asks me, why, Mom, why? And I, I told her that, you know, um, we've chosen a very public life. And, um, you know, I also, also tell her, think about the trouble that your kids usually get into or are in those public venues, right? And so this is just a mom issue for me. Um, no one asked me to pass this bill. Um, it's, it's not huge. The, the people in my district, there's not 20 people coming up here and testifying. I just think that this is a bar. I think what we do in the legislature is, is set a bar and sometimes guardrails. And then we give it back to the local control, but, but some guardrail for uh, the state of Texas. And again, I think the rest of the nation, according to some of the writings that I have uh, looked at in the media, is being looked at on this. Um, Texas are, we're, we're a proud, we're a proud state. And we do things a little bit differently than everybody else. Um, and so I just uh, would yield to questions. No friends, but I never file a bill that I believe is a perfect bill. I believe it is a process. And I, I admire and I um, adore the process that we go through to make bills better as we move. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Okay. Are there any members? Are there any questions for Representative Colton? So. Chairman Aka. Hi. Hi, Mr. Chairman. What did they need to bring up their fly fishing? That's right. Let's go fly fishing. That with me two cards. Okay. This card requires me to swipe it mm -hmm. and be physically in contact. This card lets me get real close. Mm -hmm. I won't read. Like this was the reader. About here it quits. Mm -hmm. And then there's the third type. That is what we call the active. The active. And your your intent is to only control the active chill. Yes. Yeah, so if you look in, in the first section, section A, um, which starts on line uh, seven, and and then um, certain mandatory student identification identification methods prohibited in this section, radio frequency identification technology means a wireless identification system that uses an electromagnetic radio frequency signal to transmit. Data Or tag there, there another point. There's my point exactly. This one doesn't require physical contact, but it can't be used to track me. Right. It, well, and, and that's you know that, that that's where we had a robust discussion in our office about how to define the active versus the passive. So, in my and in, 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 in looking at how I look at is the card that you and I have, which is the card that you have there. To me, that's a passive RFID. It does. You have to. You have to go past a reader. You have to be that close to a reader, right? But it's not physical contact. But but so, so I'm not sure, and that's why I said I, I'm not sure I have the perfect bill on making sure that we define it correctly. Here's the difference that I see. We scan to go in a garage. So there is there is there is. Um, um, Verification that we were in the garage, right? But Joe Strauss doesn't know where you are right now. That's right. So there's a big difference there, and that's what I'm trying to say. Is that uh, we laughingly say, "I'm in the building, but uh, Speaker Strauss doesn't know exactly where I am to track me down." And I just use him as a speaker of the house. But at the end of the day, in the objective of your bill, <clears throat> you don't have objection to this type of. Now the, the readers on the bus and so forth. The bus, the right. readers at the door of the school. Says this kid checked into school. This kid got on the bus. Yeah. Or this kid got off the bus. Right. And, and still asleep on the back seat of the bus, for example. It, it happens in all school districts, unfortunately, and that's why bus drivers are supposed to check every seat and under every seat. But, but having you said that, don't object to that sort of technology. No, no. And, and well, I I think that 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 school districts, you know, need to to, to talk about, you know those kind of entry points and so forth, and I hope that they do, and I hope they engage their um, uh, elected leaders to do that. Mine is the active tracking where you know the whereabouts of that particular person, which is going on in some school districts, not all, but it is the physical whereabouts of that person. 
and, and again, local option. Just approved by the, the, the school district, the, the board of trustees, and that there is a path, either for religious or other reasons, that a parent can opt out of it without retribution. Um, I think you'll hear, and I do think there are some people that are testifying, but what I've read from uh, the story in Northside is that um, the young lady had to leave this, the magnet school of which uh, she was uh, uh, attending and forced to go to a different school. So would, would your intent be to allow parents to opt out of either type of technology or just the active technology? Well, how I wrote it was that um, was, was the, um, again, the active. I'm here to take input on that, you know? I mean, we use it to go through the garage. It opens the door and it closes the door, right? Uh, and, and, and that is, um, you know, I think useful. There was one day that it was broken and he was having, a, the DPS officer was having to write it all down. I, I have to have about 15 minutes to my schedule if I'm gonna, if we're gonna do that every day. So there are some advantages, but I'm really concerned about the whereabouts, knowing the whereabouts of a child at all times. Or us for that matter, but that's a whole other subject matter for a different committee. Questions? Any other questions? Yeah, just a, I guess a point of clarification, uh, Mr. Chairwoman. So the, I guess the bill would basically, as stated, prohibit a district from utilizing the um, radio frequency IDs. But you mentioned something, I guess, in your opening remarks about allowing the school board through resolution to adopt. Um, I, I guess it would be a voluntary. Yeah, so a school district may allow the voluntary use of a student identification device described in subsection B only if authorized by resolution adopted by the Board of Trustees in the district and the district allows, it allows the voluntary use of the student identification. So, I mean, you know, there, there are, uh, I don't know how many of you have children in public schools, but I'm always amazed that when Lois Kate goes to the next grade and I fill out all these things and there are certain things that are voluntary that I say, yes, I opt into, no, yeah. I do not opt in. Okay, and so that's it, what that would be. It would be, a, it would be an opt-in mm -hmm. provision right. should they that, so choose. That each school district could develop. And, and I have to tell you that um, in, in reviewing the bill again, um, you know, even in, even in my camp, you know, we, we had arguments as late as this morning about how it's written. Can it be written a little bit tighter? Yes. And um, so, so I, I'm, I'm really looking for some clarification on that. Um, you know, we get this back from so, sometimes the lawyers and it's written with a lot of legalese and I would probably write it a little more clearly. Uh, and we'll hear plenty of testimony from the vendors on this. I'm certain of it. Um, I, I, I am. But, but in, here, here's the... Here's the, I guess, the meaning of the bill from, from where I'm coming from, is that if you're going to have active RFID tracking, that, 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 that parents, you know, the school board should be involved with that decision, and then parents can have an option to opt out. Um, and, and, and again, I've been pretty consistent. You know, I have my, let's just not use this technology, or let's do it with permission. And, and, and the chairman, you know, said, let's look at 101, and I, I think that's a, it's a good start. It's a good start. Thank you. To set some bar from which we'll 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 play from. Any other question? Just and you may you may have clarified this and sorry, but on 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 your concern if it was limited if if the cars were limited to the to the facility, would would that the make a passive but No, no, the active. If if they got with the you know, they got you know, outside the uh, uh, a thousand feet of school or something, it wouldn't work. Just right. so that they know on the school campus where they could work. They can do that as long as there's a resolution that's passed by the school board and parents have a a, 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 a reason to opt out if they'd like. Or you would still want to opt out anywhere, even though it was still restricted to school. Right, and I don't say specifically. It's a voluntary use. Um, as you'll hear, Mr. Chairman, some of the, 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 the uh, testimony, if either for religious reasons, reasons or other reasons, and not, it just may be me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that there can be some bad actors. Um, we've seen that um, throughout the state, and we've seen that with technology of, of, uh, of what some of that information does, is that as long as it's voluntary, if a parent says, I, I really don't want my child 
actively tracked. I mean, you kind of have to, you might say for reasons, well, if there was a fire in the school, we would, we would know. Yes and no, the control room might be somewhere else. Maybe you could do it on a laptop as you're leaving the building, but uh, I don't think that there's a real need for the active movement on a, on a grid to know where everyone is at every given moment. We don't do that here. It would be kind of interesting to see how we felt about someone knowing where we were every minute of every day. I don't know. While we're in this building. I don't know. Maybe our constituents should know where we are. Uh, while we're out here working. I don't know. These are just questions. And I, I, for one of them all, think, I don't know what, I want the option to opt out. Got it. Or opt in. Either way. If no more questions, we'll begin to take our witness testimony on House Bill. Trying not to be Dennis Bond today. Trying to have one for, I'm kidding y'all. I look forward to the testimony. 101, the Chair. We will now begin public testimony, uh, House Bill 101 only, and the Chair calls Heather Fizio. Heather, would you state your name, your affiliation, and your position on the bill? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, my name is Heather Fazio. I am the Executive Director of Texans for Accountable Government. Uh, more importantly, I'm here to represent myself and my family. Uh, we have three young children in our family that go to um, schools in LISD, and um, they're in the high school, middle, and elementary school. Um, I've been working on the RFID issue since it was brought to my attention in August with the Northside Independent School District, and um, it's a, a particular... Would you state your position? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I am in favor of this bill. All right. Um, so with the, the children in my school, in my family, I have um, a very personal interest in this, and that's why I've taken my personal time. I'm a volunteer executive director for the organization. Um, first and foremost, because I find it to be appalling to be using technology to track children like inventory and livestock. I think that there's an appropriate use of technology, and we have to draw the line at some point, and I think that is with um, tracking devices around the necks of our children in public schools. Um, additionally, the security threat posed by a child carrying around an active RFID microchip off campus. Now, the schools will tell you that they can only track children while they're on campus, which is true because there are only school readers on campus. But it is not true that the children cannot be tracked off campus because these active RFID chips have their own power source and are constantly emitting a signal. Now, people with the hacking skills and $500 to buy an RFID ID reader have the potential to be able to track children off campus, and that concerns me. Um, this bill, I think, is a great compromise because it still puts power and control in the hands of the local officials, the local elected officials, to decide whether they want to move forward with this program, but it also allows parents to opt out of the program if they find the security risk to be uh, more risky than the benefits they, they, they're, they're supposed to be, and, um, and potential health hazards. I don't know if anybody's going to be speaking to that. But having this kind of electromagnetic um, signal being constantly emitting next to these um, children's growing hearts and brains and the young woman's breasts um, may, may have a problem. We, the testing just hasn't been done. RFID has been around for a very long time, but as far as having children carrying around a device that constantly emits a signal, it just hasn't, the research isn't there yet. I'm not opposed to the use of technology in schools. I think that passive technolo RFID technology, there's a very appropriate use for that, making sure that only uh, authorized personnel are accessing certain buildings. I think that that's entirely appropriate. I would like to see further clarification on the difference between active and passive and defining what active is in the bill so that we're very clear on the difference between the tag that lets you get into a door and the tag that constantly emits a signal that has its very own power source that emits a signal on and off campus. Um, I think that this bill is there's a lot of controversy around this issue lately, especially with the young lady in, in San Antonio taking it to federal court. Um, but this bill isn't controversial. It's the program that's controversial. And what this does is going to allow parents the opportunity to not have to go to federal court if they want their children to opt out of this program. Um, and I will also point out there's no fiscal impact to the state budget with passing this bill. All it does is protect children um, from a program that their parents may deem to be um, uh, more harmful than beneficial. Um, so with that, I will close. I will hope for your uh, favorable consideration of this bill and answer any questions you may have. Members, are there any questions for this video? Mm -hmm. Ms. Nadler, well, thank you for your testimony. Thank you very much. And the chair call uh, Alfred Gerloff. Mr. Gerloff, would you state your name, your affiliation, and your position on the bill? Yes, ma'am. 
my name is Alfred A. Gerloff, Jr., and I am for the bill. I'm deeply troubled that San Antonio's Northside Independent School District has chose my son's school, John J. High, as an RFID student tracking test bed. If NIC's RFID program goes unchallenged, NIC's plan to mandate RFID tracking at all their 112 schools affecting 100,000 students and 13,000 staff. I strongly object to RFID tracking of students and staff for the following reasons. One, health risk. All life on the earth is bioelectric. Our cells, hearts, and brains are regulated by complex and delicate electrical signals. Non-ionizing arc radiation is genotoxic, meaning it interferes with these electrical processes in the human body, causing cellular degeneration and DNA damage. Recent studies show, excuse me, recent studies show that non-ionizing arc radiation increases risk for childhood leukemia, breast cancer, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, brain, brain tumors, glioma, and acoustic neuromas. RF radiation can induce seizures in epileptic patients, alter normal brainwave activity, impair learning and memory, and weaken immune systems. Children are the most vulnerable to RF radiation because their brains and their bodies are developing and their skulls are thinner. On two occasions, I've submitted two important questions through official NIC channels but have never received a response. The first question is, of all necessary RF equipment radiation, safety tests, health risk assessments, permits, and certifications been conducted for both John Jay and Anson Jones school campuses in accordance with all federal, state, and local laws? And two, if accomplished, are these documents available for public viewing? I have yet to receive any response on two occasions when I have asked these questions. As a communications specialist in the Air Force for 25 years, I can vouch that many safety and RF radiation measurement tests had to be done for all electronic equipment built in the Department of Defense. Does the great state of Texas not have similar laws when installing 300 RF transponders and 3,000 active RFID cards radiating around the necks of children at John Jay High School? RF radiation exposure is becoming a detrimental to public health in the 21st century as lead paint, cigarettes, DDT, and asbestos were in the 20th century. Items once thought safe. I'm going to quickly go through uh, as far as the misuse of public funds. I, I gave you the documentation. I'm just going to skip to the, uh, the last part of it. I don't see where they're going to make any money off of it. I see where they're going to spend a lot of money. And you can look at my math. I actually show my math where, unlike in ISB, they have yet to really show their math how they're going to make money off of this 